and all those things. So I kind of, I normally like start recording before anybody realizes that we're recording and then people start talking about like ASMR or some other <laughs> weird things, but yeah. it didn't happen today. So I'm just straight up telling you that I had started recording and yeah. now it's hella awkward, but it's super chill because life's kind of awkward. So fuck it. I'm just going to get into this introduction and we're going to do it. You ready? Yes. You ready? It doesn't matter if you are or not because you really don't have a choice. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Start the Beat with Sykes. My name is Sykes and this is my podcast right here. You're looking at it. I want to thank everybody for being here. If you're new to the show, I just... <laughs> 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 Hello and welcome to Start the Beat with Sykes. My name is Sykes and this is my podcast. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank everyone who checked out the last episode. If you're one of the people who listened to that conversation, I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks so much for coming back. But for those of you out there who are new to the show, welcome. Please feel free to make yourselves at home. And as always, there's beer and soda in the fridge. Woo! Cheers, Cheers, my friends. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Uh, I didn't get... Uh, Okay. There we go. It was rough, but we did it. I'm sitting here today with three thirds, the whole unit, the collective squad that is the legendary rave. Ah, me, make some noise for the internet, my friends. Whoa. Hello. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, it's such an honor. It's an honor. Everyone's an really happy that you're here. I'm stoked that we're getting a chance to sit here and talk. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't really know each other. I saw you play a show somewhat recently. I believe it was at the Ryder show. Yes. And I had heard a lot about your band prior to that. A lot of people talking you up. We have a lot of mutual friends. We're the most, we overrated, most overrated band in Pittsburgh. Oh. That's probably just <laughs> Pittsburgh in general, but we don't got to talk about that. <laughs> Dude, uh, man, that's, that's, <laughs> huge uh, no, you're, you were a lot of fun. I've heard a lot of good things about you. We have a lot of mutual friends, a lot of which have been on the show before. So I'm really happy to have y'all here. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having of us. Of course. Thanks for having Let's uh, introduce everybody so people can get familiar with faces and voices and things like that. Starting with you, Evan, right? Evan, you got it, man. Yeah. Yeah. I play drums. Joe. Correct. <laughs> yes. I completely forgot your name. <laughs> Mike, John, O for Doug. two, O for three. I have fucking. No I'm idea. Pat, and I Pat, play bass. Fuck, sorry, Pat. <laughs> Pat it's all good. is a good bass. I'm gonna be name, complete. Though. I'm so I'm so bad when it comes to names. And the only reason I remembered you two is because I think you had addressed both of them. I was like, oh shit, I gotta remember that. I just fucking <laughs> suck. I apologize. It's Pat. all good. Let's pound it out. Everything's good. Thanks, Pat. I'm, I'm just going to constantly address him. It's going to be obnoxious. Uh -huh. But for those of you out there that don't know Pat and his band, <laughs> uh, I don't know, you're a fucking rock band in Pittsburgh, right? How uh, would you like yes. to describe yourselves? Uh, Pittsburgh rock band as opposed to rock band in Pittsburgh. Probably. Okay, Less I apologize. Words. Sorry. No, no, no we're a, a three-piece power trio just doing the thing, the rock and roll thing. Hell yeah. How yeah. long have you been doing the rocking thing? Well, uh, we've been playing together since high school. So we're going on 10 years in February. February, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Under yeah. the name Rave on Me? No. Okay. That's relatively right. new. So this is where the plot thickens. It certainly does. You could say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a recent development when we put out our second record because our name was Honey before. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that band. Yeah, I know. They <laughs> yeah. were pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. They okay, really so the plot does thicken. It's getting a little sticky now. <laughs> it does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I um, awkwardly do not have that sound effect. The drum fill. Oh. Yeah, I don't hey, fucking have it. You should have brought your snare with you, Gov. Yeah, I do have. Excellent! <laughs> oh, shit. Which yeah, is way tighter. Much, way better. much better. <laughs> I wasn't drinking a beer when you did that. That would have been more in time. <laughs> All right, so you were called Honey. Now you're Rave on Me. You're working on your third album. I know we talked about that. You've been playing for almost 10 years, 10 years since high school, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Cool. So has it all been, always been the three of you? Yes, sir. Yes. So I guess you get along with each other. You could say that. <laughs> no, absolutely. Cool. So what's it like being in a band with friends, the same group of people for this long? Do any of you play in any other projects? We do. Yeah. Uh, it's Joe Pittsburgh, of course. Pittsburgh yes, bands. of course, so everybody does. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's part of the game. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, there's there's 15 rotating musicians in everyone's band. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, Joe's playing in a group right now called Dream Home. I um, am, yes, with Jaron Love from the Lampshades and Sam Winward, who is a new player in the Pittsburgh music scene. Ooh. And yeah. then um, I'm playing uh, 
with some of the old delicious pastries okay. guys. I'm yeah. um, in a new group called Chariot Fade and I play drums in Ryan Heiser's project called Good Sport, which is like both of those groups are radically different from what we're doing with Joe Pat and I do. So yeah, it's, it's fun. But yeah. uh Raven Me is definitely kind of we've been doing it like we said for almost ten years. So it's just kind of like I don't know. That's the thing that we're that it's my uh primary focus, I would say. Yeah. Uh musically. So yeah, but it's it's fun. We enjoy doing other yeah. stuff too. What about you, Pat? You doing anything else? I do not play in any other bands. Okay. When you're not he plays basketball. Oh, I was going to ask. I was going to ask you, Pat, when you're playing and uh, when you're not playing in bands, what do you do in dribbling? I play in two pickup basketball leagues <laughs> and I race crits in the spring. What is that? Yeah, down, what is at the, down at the Bud Harris track on like Route 8. Okay. There's a bicycle track with like bank turns. Yeah. So I, uh, I race for a shop Golden Triangle bike. So sick. Yeah. So when I'm not playing music, I'm putting myself in agonizing pain. <laughs> it's all the same, bro. Pittsburgh. Really into that. <laughs> yeah, I'm really into that type two kind of fun, you know. Okay. I feel you. I dig it. What about you guys, Joe? Evan, you doing anything outside of playing music? If you're asking me if I exercise, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe and I met each other um on the swim team when we were like six or seven. Okay. So wow. Um, so, so you're so going exercising way back. exercising brought us together. Bel Air Barracudas bring it in. And I actually met Pat. Oh, Sorry, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I met Pat the first time. That. The first time I met Patrick was uh, through middle school middle track. Middle school track, yeah. yeah I so, was in eighth grade and you were in seventh. So sports really have brought us together, believe it or not. Parents, if you're listening out there, put your kids in sports. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not going to argue that point, but you're not playing any uh, sports or exercising these days, Joe? Just riffing? No, I'm just exercising my mind. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of reading. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, there's some value in that. Yeah. Reading's important. Reading's something that I've always notoriously been very lazy about. I have yeah. a curious mind. Mm -hmm. I like learning. I enjoy stories, fantasy, you know, yeah. dragons, swords, shit like that. There's uh -huh. a lot of books about those sorts of things that I there's could probably a, dig into. There's a but, whole section devoted to it. I know. <laughs> And I just, you know, I'm really selling myself short. I'm too busy talking to people in rock bands to read, <laughs> I guess. But this is a fantasy of some sort, right? That we're yeah, all living. This is a rock and, and roll fantasy. The yeah. rock and roll fantasy. It's my life. That's a good album name. You got a yeah. name for your third album yet? I think we do now. We <laughs> <laughs> so here we are yeah. working on that third record that I've talked about. Mm -hmm. 10 years in the game, hard. Doesn't look like you're slowing down anytime soon. Why no. not? Um, What's keeping it going? It's a Good lot question. of fucking fun. There you go. That's the most genuine answer I could take. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's I Pat's band. Yeah. yeah. This is the only band that Pat plays in, so he can give you the most honest answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah, there's just uh, a compulsive need to continue to make music. I, I guess. feel that. Yeah. yeah. So you had mentioned uh, the Butler swim team. So you're from the, I guess, the Butler area. Uh, Bel, Bel Air. Bel Air, not yeah. Butler. Sorry. In, it's in Monroeville. We're all okay. from Monroeville. Monroeville. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Monroeville Mall was my mall rat mall back Sick. in the day when Here I was growing we go. up. Uh, yeah. Joe's your guy for this. Yeah. Kindred Spirits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, uh, that, was my, that was my jam. I'm a, I'm a Woody High alum. Oh, cool. I went to Woodland yeah. Hills. I, yeah. I grew up in that, that area, but I had a lot of friends in the... The Monroeville area that all went to like what was that be Gateway? Was that was the school it that was out there? It. Yeah. Yeah. Gator Gang. Gator Gang. Yeah. So <laughs> you've been in the Pittsburgh area then this whole time playing yeah. shows, rocking and rolling over the course of the past decade. Mm -hmm. How have you seen things change? Because it's been an actual pretty interesting decade. I would say once I started playing shows in the Pittsburgh area, it was about 10 years ago as well, 2008, mm -hmm. 2009 ish. So a little over 10 years. And it's been like really interesting because I started out and it was really cool. And then I felt like around like 2011, 12, 13, it was like what I call the dark ages. Like it like really sucked. And maybe that's just the stuff I was doing. Did you experience that at all? Well, what was um, it like for you coming so up? So when we started playing, we were like 17 years old. So we weren't really playing in the city too often. You know, that makes playing, sense. Yeah, yeah, we were playing around in like 
and Jeanette at the Kino Cafe. Represent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, shout outs. Yeah, it was a cool yeah. spot. Yeah, it was a great spot. Teen Center yeah. in Monroeville. Teen Center. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the Fire Hole I broke Monroeville? my first guitar at the Teen Center, which yes, was you great. <laughs> he, yeah. Joe got like, that like, was and your, and your like, first like, finger like, now. Like, like fucking... Yeah. Intentional, yeah. like Pete Townsend fucking oh, he smashed, smashed it. He smashed it, and then the teen center asked him to sign it so they could display it in the window. Yes, this is all true. Okay. And then Sorry. I think um, the teen center uh, coincidentally shut down about two months later. So Probably because the guitar they, was still covered in blood. Yeah. Well, Maybe I mean, they could have sold that guitar on eBay to get some money. Keep, I know. Could have made like 25 cents, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. Damn. Yeah, I mean... That's what we were doing when we started playing was just like local stuff. Uh, did the thing that I think most suburban bands with big dreams have is just book your own show at Mr. Small's Theater, not knowing how to book a show or what any <laughs> of that shit entails. And then your you local sh- showcase, <laughs> your local showcase with you and the other two or three bands that you play with. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then the, only your parents show up and maybe like five friends between you. We did that with uh, actually Meg Fair's band yeah. and Victoria's band too. Shirts, shirts versus skins yeah. and um, another high school band we played with, the, uh, the Trabahabas, who were yeah. like and Five for Fighting, right? No, not Five for Fighting. There was something else. It was like something like that. Fridays for Fighting. Fridays for Fighting. Yeah. Thank five you. for Fighting is the is the song or the band who it's did the, band. the song. <laughs> <laughs> The, the one hit wonder band. Saturday yeah. night's yeah. alright to fight too. Just saying. But those those <laughs> shows were really fun. And it's cool because a lot of those cats are like still in bands and they're in really cool bands. Like yeah. um which is awesome. We've grown up with a lot of people uh who were also playing shows when they were sixteen. So it's cool to see all those people still doing stuff. Yes. Um but yeah, to your to answer your question, mm-hmm. I think that so we all went to college. We were playing shows in high school together. Uh, once we went to school, we weren't really doing shows at all. Uh, I don't know. The band just was kind of on the back burner at that point. And then I got an internship my junior year of college at the garage shop where my boss essentially had like a free open Friday night and asked me if my band wanted to play. So I, I called Joe and Pat and we kind of like got the band back together to like do this weird run of shows like after not playing for a really long time mm-hmm. and we recorded some music together and that honestly spearheaded the last like three and a half years okay. that we've been playing. So we got really active in Pittsburgh, like playing in the city around mid 2015, early 2016. And that was kind of our introduction to playing into the city. Um, and that was a really cool time because like spirit had just opened mm-hmm. Um, and we, we were super fortunate to yeah, like that was... ki- kind of get in with those people really early and be part of that at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and those people, have, like, it's so funny, Warren, who's, you know, a sound engineer at Spirit, he's like the guy who's engineering our record right now. Yeah. So like those mm-hmm. people that we've met at the beginning, um, have really stuck with us and there's like still our best friends. That's awesome. Which make yeah. it really fun. So I think the, like, I do notice things changing a lot, but what resonates with me are like the things that have stuck and we've made all of our best friends or people who play in bands in Pittsburgh. So it seems like you definitely missed the, uh, the dark ages that I had talked about before, which is like super, super convenient for all of you. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, I don't know how I made it out. Those were, Really bad times. Well, yeah. What do you mean? What was so I want to hear about specifically? This. Yeah. Um, you, have a, you have my so attention. is like 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 you mentioned that you came in like right when like Spirit had opened and there was a time where there wasn't a whole lot of cool venues that were doing stuff like Spirit didn't exist right mm-hmm. yeah um Cativo hadn't really started doing shows in the way that they are now mm-hmm. like that was right around that like right before the time they had started like actually really picking up a lot of shows. Mm-hmm. Um, so situations with a lack of venues, um, passionate promoters were pretty scarce and playing shows was just, it was weird. It just, it was a much different feel. It felt like there wasn't a whole lot of bands. And when we were playing shows, it was just, the vibe was different. It's really hard to explain. It was just a combination of things. Yeah. Whereas now there's almost too much going on it's like hard to not get a gig like if you're in a band and you want a gig it's it's really fucking easy to get a gig but back then it was like and to get a gig with like cool people that are doing good music whether it's like in your genre or not you can even throw a mixed bill together nowadays and people are super fucking down with it back then it was like very much just like oh like you have this 
death metal band and you're going to play with the same fucking two death metal bands and that's that those are your options it's like shit this sucks yeah it's real boring i yeah, think it's yeah. super easy to fall into that trap like you know we were talking about our buddies the zells earlier we started playing shows with them at the same time and people like them and bad Zupel and all these bands who we've played with like hundreds of times it feels like who are also some of our best friends it's uh it's become very important for us to kind of uh make our bills a lot more diverse. I think like the longer we stay around Pittsburgh is to, it's very important for us to prioritize playing with different bands who we haven't played with and bands like also kind of outside of our realm. I, I really pay attention to that when we're booking shows now to make sure that we're not doing the same bill over and over because I think the first year or two of doing shows, like being very naive to the scene, I was like super guilty of doing that. Like to your point, playing with like the same two bands all the time. And that's become really important for us as we continue to be a band who plays a lot of shows. Yeah. To make sure that we're like kind of every time, every time we do a show, making sure like, oh, we haven't played with this band in a year or maybe ever. You know, that's really important for us. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I love trying to play with different bands and always mix it up. I, it's cool to have that control, especially if you're booking a lot of your own gigs. I find that a lot of the issue tends to be with promoters. And I don't think it's their fault by any means. And I've said this before, so anybody listening, I apologize because I've been bringing this up a lot lately, but I'm talking with them. Oh, I just spilled beer on my computer. Oh, oh do you need oh. some napkins? Yeah, okay. We'll be back in three minutes. <laughs> oh, wow, full of dead air. You got to go. We're gonna edit that part out. No, no, no leave it in. You got <laughs> no, I know. By a promoter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah who do you owe money to? Shit. That's really <laughs> um, no. Don't bring out any rice. Do you have any other uh, paper towels or anything around here? I do have yeah. some more. Yeah. Paper towels. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what I need to try to do is I can't believe that hasn't happened sooner to be completely honest with you. First time for everything. Unfortunately, yeah, man. This, is, this is one of those the things. The beer's over there, though. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That's okay. I'm, I'm like so not attached to material things. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do some karaoke? Yeah. yeah. Uh, take on me's playing. I did this. You know, it's funny. This is exactly what you want to hear when you just potentially like spilled uh, spilled beer all over your fifteen hundred dollar. Yeah, guy. fucking say it, Joe. Come on. <laughs> You're the bass player. All right. So, <laughs> fade that out real quick. You a, uh, you a karaoke fan, Brian? I'll t okay, so there's there's two things. All right. Oh. One, I'm just going to say this. If uh, the audio, if my laptop just happens to stop recording, it's just going to happen. But right now, the audio is still going. And I think great. everything's okay. Uh, I don't know how this Hallelujah. beer situation is going to work out. I don't know if I should like. You got some underneath it too. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. See now, now it's leaking out this way. Yeah. So we probably want to get that out of there too, huh? Let's do that. Uh, but uh, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like you ever watch one of those horror movies when the walls leak blood? 
That's yeah. kind of like what my laptop's doing right now, but like with beer. Is the season, man. With beer just coming out of, of the keypad. We're having a shining moment right so, now. So, uh, yeah, it's really nice to meet all of you guys. Thanks for coming over. Thanks, Pat, for all the help. I got you. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, for the sake of, uh, I'll edit this a bit, but I'm probably going to keep most of it just because it's fucking hysterical that this is happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Audio is still recording. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. It's still recording on here. I don't know. And of course, this thing has limited space left. There's all sorts of bad things happening right now, but that's okay. We'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to fix this. No, the audio on my laptop definitely stopped recording. Um, I think whatever. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> okay, so let me. Thanks, I don't Joe. know when. I don't know when the audio on the laptop stopped recording. <laughs> just gotta get rid of the rest of it. I mean, what are you gonna do with that? Yeah, All right, so let's stop that. We'll restart that. Uh, actually, hold on one second. We're going to stop that. Dude. So, all right. <laughs> I like, so I've been having, so I've been having a lot of issues with the lack, the MacBook. Look at this fucking pile of shit that's over here. <laughs> I've been having a lot of issues with this computer lately. And I like to convince, I'm going to convince myself that somehow the beer is going to help it. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Yeah. yeah so it's going to clean out all the, that uh, dust that was in there that uh -huh. was making it get all fucked up to begin with. Okay, so as I was saying, let me put this. <laughs> yeah. We need to get you like a card table or something. You can just set like this side. I need a I need a one of those beer hats. Yeah. To have the. Oh man, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fuck the headphones. Yeah, mm, no. that's what I need. Yeah. All right. Anyways, as I was saying, <laughs> promoters in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yes. I tend to find that a lot of the issue comes from promoters, and I don't think it's intentional, but it's hard to be a promoter. It's hard work finding bands that are reliable. So once you find maybe a few that are reliable, you just keep wanting to work with them because you don't want to take a chance on other bands. And then you end up booking shows with the same fucking bands over and over and over again. And it starts to get real, real, real like, I don't know. I stopped being interested in coming out to shows or I just stopped being motivated because it's like, well, I can go see. I don't know. I can go see Ray Wami and the Zells next week. Yeah. Or true. the week after that. Gotcha. You know, I don't yeah. have to go this time. Versus whenever you have these like real wacky weirdo lineups where it's like, whoa, like when the fuck am I ever going to get to see all them? This is strange. Who's going to be there? Let's go. Yeah. You see like a whole weird hodgepodge of people. Definitely. It's a lot of fun. I love those yeah. shows. I think I that was kind of uh, what I was talking about earlier to your point. You know, we've We've done the same bill so many times, and I think that that was like a, a mistake that we were making kind of early on into playing around town. Yeah. Just because we're like, oh, we like these people, and our bands make sense together. But we also didn't know like half of the other great bands in Pittsburgh just because like we hadn't really been tapped into those scenes yet. Well, it's also kind of like, a, and this is like a terrible analogy, but it's kind of like a drug thing. Like you're kind of like you get that like really good high from one sick lineup. So it's like, fuck, let's do that again because the last show was so sick. Let's just do it again. <laughs> but it's never as good as it was the first time. There's, I mean, it can be, but you know, no, there's bad true. analogy. No, <laughs> don't do drugs. No, kids. <laughs> don't, that's why you don't do drugs. It's never as good as the first time. <laughs> <laughs> My point exactly. Couldn't have put it any better. <laughs> so? But yeah, I think there's like, um, to talk about promoters, I think there's, all the best promoters we've ever worked with, I think, have like a really good understanding of their responsibility to promote. But also, it is, especially for bands at our level, it is still obviously very important for us to promote too. And I think bands get caught up often about thinking like, oh, it's like a promoter's job to promote. Or a promoter thinks, oh, it's the band's job to promote. But like, I think at this stage where we're still playing a lot of small shows, uh, it's it's this nice sweet spot in the middle. And to your point, uh, build diversity is really big for getting good crowds, I think. I agree. Um, and yeah, it's just better because especially if you mm -hmm. don't have the opportunity to get outside of Pittsburgh as much as you would like to, which it can be hard. Mm -hmm. yep. The best thing that you can at least do is while you're here, try to play to as many different crowds as possible. And there's opportunity to do that if you are willing to play with different bands Absolutely. or play different venues. And just there's a, a lot to explore. 
For sure. Definitely. It's just a matter of being open enough to engage in those experiences. Most of the people that I talk to are pretty cool, chill people that get it. But there are definitely people that are very not about it. They're, they want to just uh, you know, do their ways. thing at their place. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. I definitely. get it. You asked me earlier about karaoke, and I didn't answer you because oh. I had, uh, you know... <laughs> this is the answer I've been, I've been my, waiting My for. laptop was pissing beer. <laughs> so, yes, I fuck with karaoke. I don't go a whole lot, but I do enjoy it. I'm not much of a singer, uh-huh. so any of the karaoke stuff that I have to do has to be kind of like, um, <laughs> like ambiguous in notes. I could do a mean Fred Schneider for do some Hell P-52s, yeah. you know, yes, that's, that's yes. pretty good. Uh, or anything that's like rap, but I tend to stay away from that because I tend to find rap karaoke to be obnoxious no matter who's doing it. Oh, but, it's always like, yeah, kind of goofy. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, like, but also if you go pe- into it with the mindset like that. Then and also people, people are good. know me because I do rap stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's very much just like, oh, like, look, there's Brian doing Linkin Park. Like, who the fuck cares? <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> wow. But like, but A like, white dude doing Linkin Park. Yeah. Who'd have thought? But yeah, so <laughs> there's there's some things that I like, like any of the like weird, like 80s new wave type stuff. I can do that kind of stuff. But Love anything that. that's like real. Yeah. Oh, you amb- like psychedelic like furs. Anything that's like real ambitious vocally. Yeah. Uh, it's just out of my range. I can't do it. And yeah, Mariah carries out. Yo, to- yeah. Well, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Out. Totally. Yeah. And you only do all I want for Christmas is you because then you get like the rest of the crowd to sing along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are like good go-tos. And you, you're not a good singer. You like pick a song that like, you know, the people will like. And you point the mic toward the yeah, audience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why did you even get up there? <laughs> because everyone's having a good time now. And I sense. also, I will only go, I only like doing karaoke at places that are like a little divey and not where band people hang out. Nothing against this, but there are some karaoke spots where a lot of band people go, and it tends to be this like uh, yeah. ego flexing where it's like, mm. we're all front people in bands, and then watch me sing this song really good. It's like, I don't give a fuck that you could sing this <laughs> song. I know that you can. <laughs> it's like, so I, yeah. I usually tend to like, to like sit back at karaoke because it's like, I play shows all the time. This is for people that like don't normally yeah. do this, that just want to fucking saying Hootie and the Blowfish or whatever, go for it. Like, I am here for you. Like, I'll mm-hmm. fucking cheers to you. And then if, you know, I, if, if I do some B-52s, that's it. But it's like, you know, like upset about watching that. like some dude that like plays in a pop punk band singing the Fall Out Boy song. It's like, go fuck yourself, man. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but that's just me. That's just me. I don't know. It's no different than just singing in their own car. Yeah. You know? Like, it's very similar. Yeah. But just you're like, public. Uh, no, I'm not impressed, brah. Yeah. I'm not impressed. Yeah. But yeah, so yes, to answer your question, I do like karaoke. Cheers. Cheers. It's cool. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, yeah. Where's your karaoke spots, if you don't mind blowing them up? We've got a few. Um, That's why I said spots. Exactly. Plural. I knew it. Um, to your point, they are... I don't know. I feel like if you go out drinking in the East End, you're going to see people in bands. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That's at least been my experience with it. So every time that uh, this crew of people has done karaoke, we've actually been in the South Side at either like D's Cafe or uh, Smiling Moose. I will. I've never done D's karaoke, but I've done um, Jack on Hyde. Jack on Hyde. I, I think that say. I want to. Yeah. Those are all tight spots, and I do. I think I want to backtrack my statement about people and bands doing karaoke. I think what annoys me is when. Bands that play in a certain style of music do karaoke in the same style of music. Mm, yes. Like like pop punk band does Fall Out Boy. Or like if there was somebody I knew that was in like some <laughs> fucking sweet rock band that does like Journey, like I'm not going to care. Yeah. But when it's like I get to see somebody like flip flop, like I remember there used to be a karaoke night at the Lava Lounge, not Lava Lounge, uh, yeah, Lava Lounge in, yeah, in the South Side. Side. Yeah. That karaoke would be sweet because there would be like some of my friends that were in like hardcore bands and stuff. And you'd go down there and they'd be singing like pop songs. And that was yeah, fun. That's awesome. To like yeah. see that flip flop. That's cool. Well, I'm, that's I'm, awesome. I'm here for that. And that's that's why the Jekyll and Hyde uh, karaoke is really fun because no one there is in a band. Truly. It, it's, yes. it's just uh, it's, it's a very eclectic crowd doing doing a very uh, an eclectic mix of yeah. songs. Yeah, that's Which tight. is why I love it. Yeah, yeah. it's really fun. Mm-hmm. Smiling Moose is like that too. And yeah, I've been there to do karaoke. Yeah, so I mean, like the the best one though, uh, one of the best ones would have to be Nico's though. 
Nico's, of course. You will and, run uh, into, like, people. Oh, uh, what's the place in Millville? Know. Good Time Bar. Yeah. Or, yeah. Good I mean, time the people bar. there take it really seriously. I mean, you have people in their 50s with well-rehearsed three-part oh. harmonies. Mm-hmm. But that's and the climate. Though. Matching outfits. And it's awesome. That's Mine. so sick. Yeah. It was, yeah. It's, it's really the so most, good. the most emotionally powerful karaoke experience I've ever seen. <laughs> and it was pretty, it was pretty strong. Yeah. Was at the Permani Brothers and North for Sales. <laughs> They had a karaoke one it. night, and this was when what? I was in, I was in high school. This was a long time ago, and I saw an older gentleman sing "Lightning Crashes" by Live. Live, <laughs> and dude, like I don't know, like I don't know if he just like lost somebody he loved or really? something, but he, he like, had his was, moment. Oh yeah, I you could I could like I could see the tears from across the bar. Damn, like this dude wow. was getting into it. Wow, and then like. He just went back down and sat at the bar by himself afterwards. Like just, you definitely was, just gave me my next karaoke song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's that's a, good a great one. idea. That's a good one to do if you. Uh, it is. It's really you, good. There's some drama in that fucking song. <laughs> For uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, we're not. Next subject. Damn. So next subject, uh, <laughs> Pramani Brothers food y'all are a band your friends you probably go out to eat every once in a while do you have any like practice spot rituals or like gig like you play a show spots you like to go crush food we used to have the practice spot we used to have eaton park near our spot in mckee's rocks Mm -hmm. and we only had that for like a (laughs) glorious three months before it closed down on father's day 2019 (laughs) that was the that was the sunday hangover brunch spot before rehearsal agreed agreed I fuck with Eaton Park heavy. I like Eaton Park. Oh, I love Eaton Park. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll take it to my grave. Yeah, I love it. It's good. They have one of the best uh, veggie burgers I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's they, really they do nice. do a good veggie burger. Yeah, it's really good. I like good. the um, fuck. What what is it called? It's the one that comes on the. You get it on the Texas toast, and it comes. With, it's like the. It's uh, called the All American Grill Burger. It's my yeah. favorite thing to get. Yeah, dude, yeah. I fuck with that heavy. Uh, yeah, bro, I, I got Evan. I need you the whole this fucking is, menu. I know this is. Sh- <laughs> I could. I have like this weird um sentimental thing with Eaton Park because after um, high school marching band competitions, that's where the whole marching band went. Okay. Um, Did you in march the, into Eaton Park? Yeah. Like full with, regalia? Yeah. Like with your like <laughs> snare, my, my snare drum like the on the harness. Big bass drum, yeah. You had a smiley cookie painted on your snare drum. I did. <laughs> my my drum head. Yeah, there was a Just a went print. to smiley cookie. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so Damn. glad to be in the great state of <laughs> Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay anyway uh-huh um man and eaton park would get so <laughs> pissed off at us because the marching band competitions ended so late because they would end at 10 30 and then the time to load the trailer with like 100 plus people plus their instruments getting back to the high school loading all of it out and finishing up like we would lock the doors of the high school at like 12 30 sure and then we would go down to eaton park who closed it too and 100 kids would come in at 1 a.m and they'd be like Fucking hell, not again. Like every Saturday. Ball out. That's wild. Yeah. But uh <laughs> I've been a big Eaton Park fan ever since. Cause the food and the service is always really quality. Yeah, that's yeah. A, I, I think for a family restaurant, it's my favorite food of any family restaurant. It okay. doesn't even come close. Max and Irma's though. Max and Irma's Got is not a family ice restaurant. Cream bar. Yes, it is. No, they serve alcohol. Oh, that makes it non-family. <laughs> yeah, family. Well, wow. family Why are you so serious so about this? You're talking about Dude, yeah. he was so cold about that. Seriously. Holy shit! You see Max- how, how much Evan loves Eden Park. <laughs> I just brought up a, what is this arguably is a, a family. It has a freaking ice cream bar. Not a family restaurant. Not a family. <laughs> Fuck all of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's a good point, though. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that, Evan. That's a good point. <laughs> we went to my the last time. Sorry, uh, we we. The most ridiculous drive we've ever done as a band was we did we left Norman, Oklahoma and did a straight shot to Pittsburgh, which was 18 hours. That's long. Yeah, it was really it was brutal. It and was then, fucking horrible. Yeah, it was really bad. But we got about we pulled into my driveway in Monroeville at the time at like 430 a.m. We left at 9 a.m. that day yeah. and got back in at 430. I've done I've done. And, in the van Orlando to Pittsburgh straight. And it was, it's about, brutal. It was about the same yeah, time. Yeah, it is. It was about the same time. But uh, we went to we went to Max and Irma's the next morning. And I think the only, like, we were just sitting at the table and like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't think, unless you're, I don't think I've ever been awake for 18 hours straight because Pat did the first five, because Pat drove the whole way down, which we split up in two drives, which was like very doable. 
We played this show. It was the worst show we've ever played. Oh, One of the no. worst. It was it was really bad. Yeah, some dude walked on stage and unplugged my amplifier. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. He like it, it was yeah. It was like he, definitely accidental, but it was weird. Uh we did that thing mm -hmm. where like we you played off stage, but you have your amps and stuff on stage. Okay. Um, you know, trying to be all like Because all the punk fans did it before us. Yeah. yeah. We're like, we're hardcore too. <laughs> We just drove from Pittsburgh. Like, what's up, Norman? And then, uh, like, the third song, <laughs> this dude, like, was messing around with something on stage because we weren't on it. So he felt like he had liberty to just walk up on there while we were playing <laughs> and then just, like, fucking unplugged my amplifier. <laughs> totally, like, by accident. But then it was just like, uh, yeah, it just ruined the we whole set. We were, we were <laughs> yeah. shook. Oh. On top of that, on top of that, we, we rolled into Norman that day, probably, like, five hours before our set. And the people of this festival that we were playing were like, they were super friendly really cool. and really, really gracious nice. that yeah. we were there. They gave us a hundred dollars like for food. They were like, go out and get yourselves like some food. And we're like, oh, this is great. Then we came back and there was nothing but like free stone beer all day. So not only did the guitar become unplugged, but I threw up minutes after the set was over because <laughs> I was so drunk. So like the show was just really bad. And I remember when we were done, we were like, we all knew, you know, it was one of those things where like, okay, that set was horrible, but we are here and we're going to have fun tonight. So uh, hell yeah, we tried, we tried <laughs> making the best of it, but yeah, it was the worst, one of the worst shows we've ever played. Buck. So was that in honey days or that was a honey? That was yeah. honey days. That was even before our first record came out. Uh, Joe and Pat had just finished, co finished college. I was still a senior and I took off like a bunch of days just so we could make this trip to like a, do a college music festival. Mm -hmm. And like we were excited, like bands like Cloud Nothings were playing and a few other, I forget, yeah. I forget who was playing, but it was fun. The it was Daddios. Remember, that was the one band that we made friends with. They were cool. Yeah, the, the Oklahoma bands were actually yeah. like the coolest people. Yeah. Um, and then there's that, there, that surf band. But we, we just really played cool. a horrible set. Um, and then yeah. for me to make it back to school in time, we had to make Memories. the drive in one day, which was really brutal. But, but we you did it. Oh yeah, we rolled up and you're to, here. Uh, yeah, that John and we went to Max Cougar Mellon Camp song. The uh, you know Jack and Diane. Jack and Diane was like when we rolled back into Monroeville. Oh, yeah, it was like felt like return to, <laughs> to our roots, back to Monroeville, <laughs> where everyone's parents are John Cougar Mellon Camp fans. And I say John Cougar Mellon Camp because I'm a real fan. I know his full name. <laughs> you know, real ones know. <laughs> Real, recognize, real, my friend. Yeah, true. cheers. Real, recognize, real. Yeah. So I'm sure this is a very tired topic, but I have a feeling that's going to segue into a very relevant topic for it. bands. Yeah. So the name change. Yeah. Why? Yeah. And why? Why and why? Why and why? That's a loaded question. Why? I know. Yeah. So my well, brother... Why change the name, and then yeah. why did you change it to the band name that you changed it to? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Those are kind of two different questions. Yeah, so um, when we named the band Honey, my brother, who is two years older than me, who's um, very smart, he's a smart cat, mm. but he's wow, been that's telling on us- on the record, too. It's on the record. Man, I would never say it to his face. We got but, it recorded, um, man. <laughs> but I just remember my brother telling all three of us, because he's friends with all three of us, and he was like, you guys, are, like, you guys have to change your name. It's like, it's- it's just like such a commonplace name. And we're like, shut up. Honey's a great name. We love this name. And then the the more serious we were getting with the group and the more shows we were booking, uh, the more we realized that there were about 20 other bands in America alone named Honey. Or like um, some iteration of it. Yeah. And it was becoming it was becoming kind of difficult to uh not distinguish ourselves, but like we would get wrong emails and wrong facebook messages totally uh, yeah like, and then it came down to like us opening up for bands that are like touring acts like national touring acts and being like oh yeah we saw this other band called honey like in new york city or like we're on tour with a band called honey we're like Jesus okay. fucking Christ. Like, <laughs> is it, yeah it, yeah, like, that's it, like, it only got worse well that's that's yeah. whenever you're like mm, yeah maybe we should try and then i remember something. i texted my brother and i was like fucking damn it cameron you were right so uh, we decided. I know you're right. We just yeah. Before we made our second record, I think that was kind of the point where we're like, if we're gonna do another record, it should be under an, should be under a different name. And yeah. <laughs> we we had this idea to book a show to announce the new name, and uh, Spirit got back to us with a date. We still hadn't even had the name planned. 
but Spirit was like, we can do March 1st because we were going to release a new song the next day. So like it, it fit in with our timeline perfectly. But we didn't even settle on the name. I think it was less than a week before the actual show. It was the Wednesday before the show. It was like, it was cutting yep. down to the wire. Yep. It was like, we, we had the show booked knowing that we had to announce a name change and had no idea what it was going to be. Um, <laughs> yeah. Professionals. Yeah. Very, yeah. But that was, that was honestly the way to, to do it because I don't think, I mean, you could fight over a band name forever, you know? Yeah. So I think having a, having a hard deadline was so important for us because we never would have settled on something. Yeah, I guess that was the idea behind that. Yeah. yeah. And then Joe brought the name to us because uh, he was drunk at Tina's. Yes, yeah, I was. Uh, I'll, I'll let you tell the story. Yeah, it's my story, so I'll tell it. <laughs> I'll preach it. Uh, so, yeah, I was at a bar at Tina's and... We had just been springboarding a bunch of names together, uh, and I had a bunch of just words in my head, and yeah, I was hanging out with some friends. They had a jukebox in there. It's a lovely jukebox. Uh, it's a row of me, which is like a common jukebox company. They're like all <laughs> over the place. If you go to uh, another great diner, Ritter's, all of the little jukeboxes they have at their like their tables where you can play such great hits like Crash by Dave Matthews Band. Uh, all <laughs> can we get a Wayne's World guy right now? Wow, Thanks, that was Brian. even better. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick. Yeah. Uh, we should definitely throw that in a song sometime. <laughs> that was really cool. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I was just at Tina's drunk putting a song on and... I had the word rave in my head, and I was like, did that jukebox say rave of me? <laughs> and I was like, no, it doesn't, but I like that. So just pitched it, and all of our other names were just so bad that that was the only one that could possibly make any sense. Tight. Yeah. Yeah. Tight. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I was curious just because you went from such a, a common name that I assumed was changed because of what you said mm -hmm. into something like incredibly unique and i was curious about the origins of yeah. that so, so that's the, super neat the pretentious like reasoning behind it is that <laughs> i mean first off it is like unique like you said so you know if you're going to be searching it on your spotify Bandcamp, all the social media stuff like we're not going to get confused anymore not going to get the random emails from like other brought the honeys mm -hmm. and stuff like that and then part two it's like well i got it from a jukebox which is just like a musical device but i mean like it's an assortment of genres blah 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 like basically the idea being like we could basically do anything we want, you know? If we have this name, it's kind of ambiguous enough. And, like, the source is just, like, a jukebox. The, so, ir the yeah. irony is you got your name from a thing so you could be more recognizable on a thing that's killing the thing that you got the name from. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Very meta. Yeah. 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 I mean. Tight. <laughs> it was like. That's right. I knew we didn't name ourselves, like, <laughs> Spartify or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, kill us if we would have done. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember one day I like logged on to our band Facebook page and I was like, "You have this co-host request for this event," and it was like, "Honey with the Marked Men in New York City." And I was like, holy shit, these guys didn't tell me about this show. And then there was like a two minutes later, it was like, "This show is already sold out," and I was like, "Fuck yeah, like." <laughs> This rolls. <laughs> and then the other honey sent us a message. They're like, yo, can you like send us that event page? Like, or whatever. And I was like, ah, damn it. It's just like that stuff happened all the time. I like, bet. That, that wasn't an isolated incident at all. Yeah. But it's, yeah. It's so interesting. The point that I was going to get into yes. with this was just how social media and the internet in general is like forcing us to make these decisions for our bands and our art that we normally wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like weird things. Like even with my thing, uh, the, the rap shit that I do, I just put music out under Sykes for the longest time, yeah. but that is also a very common thing. It's a common last name. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of businesses. And like, if you try to look it up, it doesn't happen. So it's like, that's what I ended up doing Sykes and a new violence. Cause now it's, I'm, I didn't have to change my rapper name. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, more yeah. unique. Now we come up very easily. And that was all because of Google. No other reason. It's crazy, man. It's yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah, it's not fun, but you got to play the game. I guess so. Got to play the game. How do the three of you deal with the game and social media and being, you know, relevant in 2019? Pat? Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm a bad one for this question because <laughs> I don't have any social media. <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to run with, uh, you know, Motorhead. Mot- <laughs> Triple H. Oh. Time to play the game. Yeah. That's, your, that's it's one our, of his favorite it's songs. It's one of our favorite, favorite songs. songs. It's one of our favorite songs. Yeah. It's, yeah. But, you know. It's probably bad. I mean, we just humor it. So you're not much of a social media person in general? No. Pat really. checks in on it. Just He lets me know. Cool. Much Check like, in. Much like sure. Dunstan. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that was good. <laughs> but that's definitely in the movie. <laughs> that's definitely yeah. like when he's like going running through like uh-huh. air ventilation shafts. One thousand percent. He sees a naked lady in the shower. <laughs> Dunstan, you horn dog. <laughs> uh, so the social media stuff, Joe Evan. What about you guys? Uh, is that just whatever? I do it, but Evan does the Evan does the social. Media I do the social band. medias, but yeah, it's all I don't know. God bless him. I mean, to Pat's point, like you, you have to have it to. Every band has it, you know. It's so funny, like, the three of us love Deer Hunter, and for the longest time, like, they weren't even on social media, and I remember, like, the second, like, they got it, we're like, fuck, like, even 4AD is making Deer Hunter do it, like, after, for, like, the longest time, they are like, we're not doing this. Like, yeah. It's just something that literally everyone has to do if you want to even have, like, a successful live show. Like, that's how people find out about your shows now. You know, mm-hmm. you have Facebook, or you have, like, I don't know the equivalent to what was bands in town. Like people track artists on those apps and stuff. Yeah. And I don't know. Like it's, it is a, I, we use it to, to promote our shows and stuff. But if you ever look at our posts, we don't take anything too seriously <laughs> uh, because it is a necessary evil, but we have fun with it. Yeah. So, because like, how else are you going to use it? Yes. My favorite thing I is think- like following older artists like i just started following peter noon from herman's hermits on instagram and he's just like these dudes are like the like the baby boomers like idols you know yeah like 60s guys i they just don't even know like they're just like stream of consciousness post pictures like he just posted a photo <laughs> of he had a sold out show that he played in like kansas city or something and it's a photo of him and it's just like his hairline and like then like a crowd of people behind him it's like Great night in Kansas City. <laughs> it's like, you just post that right on the Instagram. I'm like, Peter, I love you, man. I love you. You're a hero. That that's the social media like watermark that I want to yeah. achieve. Like, yeah. yeah, I think that I like I like social media. I think it's great as long as you're being genuine on it. It just yes, I agree. Sometimes exactly why I like it is when uh, there are some like artists, whether they're bands or whatever, where like they end up taking on this other life on social media that like, you know, just isn't super genuine or it's forced or it's very kind of like desperate, like please pay attention to me. And like, it's just that shit just really rubs me the wrong way. I think, you know, and I think that there's a point even where there's too much irony or too much self deprecation where it's like, ah, this feels really contrived. I think if you're going to use it, you've, it has to be a representation of who your band is as people. Yeah. And I think that when I'm using it, I try so much to think about like, what would Joe, Pat, and I collectively, how would we advertise a show in one post? I try and make it very concise. I never like type these like convoluted, like three paragraph blurbs. That, Nobody's like, reading it. Because you're yeah. right. You yeah. see that shit. Like when I see other people do that, I'm like, I'm not reading this. Mer- you, I think no. I think on social media, it's a, I think when people go on it, at least for me, and I've talked with Joe and Pat about this too, like you check out so quickly because you're like, I could be making better use of my time. So when I'm on it, it's a very short burst and I'm like looking for things that pertain to my interest. So I don't know. I guess when I'm doing it, I try and make it short and to the point, but also make it genuine to your point. Yeah. You know, but I don't think about it. I almost, I also simultaneously don't think about it too much because if you do, you're going to just give people the exact opposite of what they want, I mm-hmm. think. But yeah, we, we do it. You know, you have to do it if, if you're a band. Like, I don't even know how else you would, you would get people to your shows. Like, f- I mean, I love the ideas of flyers still working. We still print out physical flyers. Like, Joe will make them for our shows because, like, they're important. But you're making flyers for social media. Like, like they're, you that know. That is ironic. What, go, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, when you're walking around, if you see people walking on the street, who's actually like looking in the windows, like, oh, I wonder what shows are coming up. Everybody's still on their fucking phones. Anyways, exactly. You know, one thing that I noticed that started fucking me up that I never saw before. Hmm. I started seeing like if I noticed it a lot in New York and now it's happening here. Like if you're like on the subway or like around like downtown areas, there are people that are putting their advertisements on the ground. Because <laughs> they're looking know. down. Because people are just, really, yeah. yeah. Like that makes I've, sense. I've seen wow. advertisements on the ground. Like they do that, like that thing where, like, uh, it's not wheat pasting, but it's like, mm-hmm. like plastic laminate stuff on the ground. There's advertisements because it's like people are just looking down now. That's it's like, insane. Get I mean, them off that's the walls. clever as and fuck. It but is that's be- also dark. It's it's scary. dark. <laughs> it's really dark. It's, and to your point, I think geez. even I think the novelty yeah. of it is is enough to get people's attention. When people are like, holy shit, there's flyers on the ground because Damn. it's targeting humans looking at the ground. Yeah. Can, it's can, like this weird fucked up wake up yeah, call. I don't, I, don't I don't like it. Yeah. But at the same time, good idea. Yeah. Good idea. Can you imagine <laughs> a idea. world where sidewalks are gone and there's just advertising flyers? <laughs> Then people will start looking up again and like, ah, shit, we got to get Your band can in. rent this sidewalk for $10 a month. <laughs> Lamar sidewalks. Lamar sidewalks. <laughs> Orange Barrel Media. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have this yeah. they'd have the sick LED ones. Oh well then I mean like better than the laminate for sure. You need the LED like walking an LED. Yeah. That's cool. So speaking of LEDs, uh-huh. live shows, <laughs> stage productions. How what is I mean, I've seen you play before. You seem to just kind of be like a no bullshit, just get on stage, play your music sort of band. Yeah. What are your feelings on like the elements of stage production and just like the visual representation of being a band? Yeah, it's a good, good question to ask because I've been thinking about it a lot. Uh, in particular, like we have our friend Eric who has gone on tour with us and he works at Howlers now. He's the sound uh, engineer there. And um, he also is really involved in like light design and he would go on tour with us and like be our merch dude and uh just like renaissance man if he was needed like yeah the sound engineer there was like running late or like i don't know need a little bit of help which some sometimes weirdly does happen sure um especially in like maybe even like a diy space, yeah you know he was always ready to lend a hand if it was needed but he also like has this whole light show thing that he like made for us so we take him on tour he put that down and it's cool because he do that for other bands too so i made the shows more engaging um i like it a lot whenever we have like a good light show um physical like like the bands that's a good question i've been thinking about it a lot like because i know some groups try to synchronize their outfits to get a vibe across and i think that that works really well yeah it's yeah. like something that i really miss particularly in like rock and roll when i yeah, like absolutely. think about like old school rock bands it's like what is missing how has rock changed and it's like oh yeah it's like one thing that seems yeah. to be missing is just that idea of like like the gimmick of the rock band. Like yeah. I feel like there's something happened where people started taking themselves a little bit too seriously. Mm-hmm. And like I get it, but you could also still have a gimmick but be like serious. It doesn't have to be like hokey. You can be very genuine about like, it, I yeah, think. Yeah, like you don't yeah. have to be Kiss, which I saw your photo recently. <laughs> that was fucking sick. Thanks. Uh, but I mean, like you don't have to go <laughs> over the top idea. if you want to. That's fucking tight. Yeah. But you could also just be like, again, like Motorhead still had a look. Yeah, they did. But then like yeah. something happened over the course of time where bands stopped having looks. I, and I feel like it says a lot. Like, yeah, I don't know. I try not to be like a very like vain person or someone that's concerned with fashion in general. Yeah. But I yeah. think if you're going to be a collective unit on a stage, it should somewhat make sense. And because like that resonates with people, whether does. they want to admit it or not. It Absolutely. Does, yeah. It certainly does. Yeah. I remember that. Oh. There was this video of us doing a live set in Cleveland like four years ago. Mm-hmm. And I remember Pat watching it on his own and he came to practice one day. He's like, guys, we've got to fucking work on this. Because He's like, it looks like three friends who just went up onto a stage at a bar who like had never yeah. talked yeah. once about playing in a band. And like it was a joke. We mm-hmm. like laughed about it. But I was like, no, there was it, some sincerity. Yeah, to there's, it. there's but there's definite sincerity to it. I think that like. We've all seen bands play in intimate clubs where there's been no light show where you were like, oh my God, that was one of the best shows of my life. And then on the contrary, you've also probably seen some of the best shows where they were massive productions. So I think it's really, I don't know. You're right. I think that regardless of the size of the show, the size of the production, like there needs to be continuity in the group. And if that's owning not having a light show and it being like this small 100 cap room where like 
the energy in the room is just like on the stage and what's happening in the audience, that's great. But if you're a band like, I mean, I even think about in the club setting, like a band like of Montreal, who I saw a year ago, who has an incredibly synchronized performance. I was like, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. It's like their set is so well rehearsed and they have a thing that they have like curated so well. It's really impressive. Yeah, they're giving people a show, you know? Yeah. And that's something, another thing that I think is really missing in rock music to some degree. It's like the only rock bands that seem to be out there giving people a show are like fucking Imagine Dragons and 21 Pilots. <laughs> or then like you also have hey, like a lot sure. of even the more like, more popular like rap acts. Their shows are more rock and roll totally. than a lot of Definitely. rock bands. And that's I think that's a big part of the reason why that music is so big because they're still putting music out on this scale where it's like we're this larger than life thing. Totally. Like, rock became like too modest yeah. and then people stopped. Yeah, It became too normal. And I feel like people don't like the average listener of something like that it's almost like like watching a fantasy movie or something like that like people want to see the spectacle they, they do yeah. they love that absolutely it, but it's hard to right. be able to it's hard to find that balance in doing it if like your music isn't this crazy over the top thing yeah you know what i mean if you are doing something that's more straightforward but there are little ways to do it and still make it seem like it's like a sure. professional I mean, production even on our level we're just lucky enough to have a friend who's like yeah <laughs> i'll come and install the lights an hour before load in yeah and i'll curate a program for you guys and it makes a fucking difference. It makes a huge you, difference. Yeah, totally. Especially because he knows the songs too. The and song. he has he has like a different light design for each song, which is mm -hmm. like incredible. And we sadly don't get that at every show and we don't expect that of him, but it makes a huge difference when we have him. So Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, I was thinking a lot while you brought this up that like thinking about like influences on like DIY musicians and the progression of like when did rock and roll music stop being this like performative like spectacle thing when we like transition to like three dudes like hopping on stage at yeah bar. it looks like they, they didn't even talk to each other before they walked up on stage or whatever uh -huh. like um it's weird because like there was a period of time it's like it's almost like as post uh grunge thing or whatever i'm thinking about like even like those bands uh like 80s college rock bands and like when like punk music started being like cool, you know, like more on like a semi mainstream level and then like really mainstream in the nineties, all those bands like dressed like, Oh, we don't care. Like we got torn pants and, <laughs> but they still, know, all they look still the same. all look the, the same. same. Yeah. 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 That's the thing that was like everyone, like, I feel like there's a, there's a hangover effect still in a way where it's just like, you saw that. And I mean, at least like for like the music we play, I know like you see that and you're like, yeah, that's the attitude. Like replacements or something like I just don't give a shit. <laughs> like you enjoy it or what? Like I'm gonna wear what I was wearing all day, and like that's it. Whatever. We're not. I don't know. And then well, yeah. I think a lot of it too. Like yeah. sometimes with some bands, it's almost like that. There's something. Some people just have this attitude about them when they step on stage, where like their attitude is the stage show. Sure. There's like a presence yeah. to them, yeah. and that's a rare thing. You can't just give yourself that. That's just something that happens. True, but some yeah. some people do have that too. Yeah, um, and those are the fortunate ones that don't really have to like. That's just natural, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you had mentioned Pat that you had seen a video of you playing, and that kind of. Uh, when you were like, oh, we need to do something about this because we look real silly. <laughs> yeah. I think one thing that's really important for bands to do if they can is to take live footage of their sets. Even if it's oh, not yeah. even if it's not to put out. Just yeah. you know, like we did this for a long time with Greywalker, where every show we would play, we would just put a GoPro or something on the side of the stage. Yeah. And then we could watch the footage just because like being able to hear back what you're playing, actually see what you look like on the stage. It's like not to be like a uh like conceited or like yeah. you know like it's just a matter of like no you're doing your due diligence you don't know what you actually look like and you can of only course. your friends are always gonna be like yo sick show man <laughs> you know what i mean it's like yeah. it's very rare somebody's gonna be like yo you know what i think you know he needs to move around more you're moving around too much like nobody's gonna say that to you yeah no. so it's good to see that stuff and make those decisions for yourself yeah. Yeah. it's like i like sports like you you watch the plays right and see how the team's doing True. And I think that like for us, we record most of our practices, especially when we were living together, playing in the basement, we recorded every rehearsal and we would 
remember the good takes from that and send it to our drive. And like, that would be what we formed our demos off of. We're like the best basement tapes. Yeah. But something that I think to Joe's point earlier, like the visual element is important. And I think that that is something that like not a lot of bands maybe do and like ourselves included. So like that one video was just like, it's a real kind of like stops you dead in your tracks. We're like, Oh shit. Like, yeah, we might sound great, but like there is like an element missing there. And I think that's really important. It's almost like the, uh, it's like the Instagram thing, right? Say you're scrolling through your social media. You mentioned it before. You're just kind of looking for something that's going to catch your eye. And if it doesn't catch your eye, you're going to keep scrolling. Yeah. So say you're playing a show. Nobody knows who you are. They might walk around that corner at Spirit or something, say, like, oh, somebody's playing. They might look, see you, and just be like, oh, I don't jive with the way this looks. I'm not yeah. going to give it a moment to, like, listen to it. I'm totally. going to go fuck off. Mm -hmm. And it's like as much as it sucks to like, you don't want to necessarily think about like, oh, we need to always look cool so people will pay attention to us. But there is sort of that like quick first impression thing. And with people's attention spans now, it's like you have like two seconds to reel them in. Yeah, absolutely. So it's wait. so funny. It's like even on like a like video algorithm stuff, like for the podcast and YouTube, uh -huh. you get like uh, if you look in the stats, there's like one second views, three second Fuck. views minute views wow so you could see that how many times like people actually watched for long enough and it's like that's an that's enough of an engagement you're telling me three seconds is enough to count for something versus and the, like and the that fun versus insane. a minute and, and the fact so, that it's not even like the smallest increment there's the one yeah. se there's the one second and if you too, ever you know? notice this too there's a lot of stuff like you ever like oh i've i'm not i'm not sure if this is completely factual but it will take stuff with like a lot of like music videos that bands put out. Like they uh -huh. attach all this little extra shit before the song actually starts. You know, like a little like whether it's like a little introduction to a thing or like these long unnecessary credits before the video hits. Yeah. yeah. It's because a video needs to play for a certain amount of time before it's actually counted as a view. Yeah. Ooh. So they put that, they pad that time on the beginning to force people to watch it until the song actually starts so they can get the view count. Because even if somebody watches the song for like 30 seconds, it's not going to count as a real yeah. view on YouTube. Wow. It's fucking so that's another way that the internet's like changing and influencing the way that we distribute Damn, our stuff. Dude. Wow. That's, that's insane to hear. That's it sucks. Insane. Wait, I have a question. Though. Yo. You really like the light, the long sleeve white t-shirts then at the show. Huh? When you saw us play. Oh yeah, you looked great. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you the had the, 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 the rider yeah. shirts. Yeah. Like yeah. one of the few times no, we actually That was actually I stage. thought that was really, really cute. Oh, I thought it was yeah. fucking awesome. That was like one of those things for me. Like I saw that and it was like, it's fun. It's like they like it's like you made like like you're going to a sports game, like a high school sports <laughs> Hell game. Yeah. yeah. And like, you know, fucking like we're gonna support our home team. And I was like, that's really cool. Oh, Just damn. to like yeah. do something even something as simple, even like a little like five dollar thing like that. Uh, just yeah. it was like it means so much. It's like they even took the time to do that. It's so fun. It's very self aware. It's very supportive that you you know like we support the band. We're happy to be here. We're going to be kind of goofy. We're going to play a fun set. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, awesome. I really really dig that when bands do stuff like that. Yeah. Killer. Well, That's that, that was yeah that was just honestly returning the favor for Derider because uh, those guys uh, Cormac did that at our release show that uh, that they played, which was at Spirit a few years ago, like what twenty seven. 2016? I don't 17. even remember. So 17. And yeah. uh, we we knew we're like, damn, we have to do that. But like all of us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So but you're right. I, I agree. Cool. Even to your point, it, it adds, there is like a, a little extra element there. Even when it's something as dumb as that, you know? It's just like the nuance of just knowing like, oh, like it's one thing to like have a bunch of bands on a bill. But to see something like that and be like, oh, like these are actually, like, they're friends. Like I don't. I've never seen any of you together in a room at the same time, yeah. you know? And so it's yeah. like, I don't know this, but even me not knowing you at all, it's like, oh, they're obviously fans of the band, fans, friends with the band, and uh, they're just here to support and play a set and have fun. And That's mm -hmm. awesome. Give people a good time. I think it's really, really important as a band, too. I think this is something that a lot of bands don't think about enough when they're playing shows or putting shows together to consider the fact that you're putting together an event that people are going to come to and you want them to have a good time. A lot of times bands do shows like for themselves, like, Oh, let's play with our friends band again, whatever. And they're not really considering the fact that, Oh, like people are going to take time out of their day to come to the show. Maybe we should make sure they're going to have a good time. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I agree. Um, and to our point earlier, like it's, I don't know. 
I could talk so much about this, but I feel like we already tapped into it. So I'm just going to have another sip of beer. <laughs> cool. Groovy. Very but I'm chill. happy you enjoyed that show. That was an awesome show. And yeah. I loved every band who played that show was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Sleeping Witch and Saturn is like a pretty newer band. And I think they're amazing. They're so awesome. And Harkin, I think like they're like taking a little bit of a break for a while uh, of what I of what I've read. But I'm happy we got to play one of their last gigs. And then Derider, like we've just known them forever. So those are like three three really awesome bands that people should be seeing in Pittsburgh. I think support your friends, you know. Yeah, so, support your friends. Agree, indubitably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have no idea how long we've been recording now because we had some things, but I think we're probably around an hour. So we'll probably just do a couple more things and Damn. then we'll wrap this thing up because I think we were at about twenty something minutes when my <laughs> spilled the beer. <laughs> And now we're at another 44. So math tells me we've hit an hour. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. God, we could talk all fucking night. Yeah, but it, it's all good. Is there, do you have any questions for me? How about that? <laughs> Let's open up the floor. Oh, no. Here. How long have you been podcasting? Five years. Damn. Favorite bar in Pittsburgh. Favorite bar in Pittsburgh. Okay. So, and favorite restaurant. Okay. So immediate when I think favorite bar. I'm thinking of like breweries, but I don't think a brewery should count as a bar. It's different. It's a totally different thing. It's different. Yeah. So favorite bar in Pittsburgh. Oh my God. Um, I like spirit a lot. I like Brillo box a lot. Yeah. Um, Tina's is awesome. Uh, even howlers can be tight. Um, so it's hard to say. I think I might go with Brillo box. It's an excellent choice. Good choice. Good we were choice. there after we did our, uh, kiss as Nirvana set <laughs> tight. Yeah. It was a really fun night. We still had our makeup on. It was yeah, it was good. You know, I mean, it is the season. You could just walk out of makeup any time of the, of the day uh -huh. now in October, and people are just like they're cool with it. Hell but yeah, it, yeah. It did feel like the Star Child though, walking around. You know, like all the stars are out tonight. This is this is my night. You know, you know what would have been yeah, really yeah. sick. So I I I I saw the photo and I couldn't really see your outfits. Uh -huh. So were you just kind of like grunge outfits? It was grunge out. It was grunge you outfit. Got it. Yeah. It, it would have been makeup. so sick if you had like you know like the face paint, the grunge outfits, but yeah. kiss shoes. I know, like big uh -huh. platform boots. <laughs> I wish. I wish, man. Damn. That'd have been so good. That would yeah. have been fire. There's yeah. always next year. We're really doing a good job, of, like talking about curating for our like, <laughs> visual, our visual <laughs> element, our visual elements. Now, yeah, we really are. Um. Favorite restaurant yeah. is a hard call. There's a lot of good places to eat and a lot of stuff that's dramatically different. I will say probably my favorite and most unique place to eat right down the street from Brillo, Apteca. I would agree. Apteca is awesome. It's the best. All right, uh, Joe, what's your question? Uh, well, I was wondering what your musical process is like, you know, for either band you'd like to talk about, Sykes in the New Violence or with Grey Walker because they're sure. both very different. Yes, they are know? both very different. Yeah. So with Grey Walker, I am the vocalist in Grey Walker slash uh -huh. band dad. Band so dad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I That's awesome. handle a lot of the behind the scenes management stuff. I Do you like playing with your kids? Or Yeah, they're great. <laughs> they're great. Great guys. Um, great boys. Strapping young lads. Uh -huh. uh, you go places. You're proud of them. Yeah, proud of them. Proud of them boys. But uh, I mean, they they do they write all the music, and you know, I just go to practice, and every once in a while, kind of say like, "Hey, like I think like if we extend this part, it might work better vocally," and you know, just yeah, the little mm -hmm. contribute little things. But for the most part, they kind of write the stuff, and then I come in later. Mm -hmm. uh, Sykes would be the complete opposite. Um, so like, I pretty much do the skeletons of all the tracks, mm -hmm. you know, with my computers and beat machines and stuff, and then. Uh, once I have like some ideas laid out, I'll bring over my, my buddy, Evan, who plays guitar, who also plays in Grey Walker with me mm -hmm. and Justin who plays bass and, uh, they'll come over and, uh, usually sometimes I might have an idea for a bass line on synth or I might have like some keyboard thing that I want to do on guitar. But for the most part, it just kind of leaves space open for yeah. them to kind of start filling in stuff. And then from there, it just becomes a back and forth thing. So yeah. it's just a whole lot of like basically like sitting down in like a studio environment. Uh -huh. Like we don't like jam. Really? You know what That's I mean? Wild. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much like when we're like us writing songs is basically like pre-production for an album simultaneously just because it's like so it's so electronic. That's awesome. 
There's so how do you, how do you do that in the, in the live context? Like, how do you practice for that? If you like, you write the song. So once the song is completely written, yeah, or at least we have enough like pre-production stuff done that we could start practicing it. Yeah, we just uh, go to the practice space, and then I will load up the recording stuff, mm-hmm. and you know we run the back tracks out, whatever we need to. Yeah, and then uh, they play on top of it. In, That's you know, awesome. For the back tracks, I run everything out separately through an interface. Mm-hmm. So instead of being like one line out from the laptop it's like eight di's out yeah so drums synth backing guitars backing vocals backing anything that's it's all running on separate di lines out so whenever Mm -hmm. we play somewhere that has like a good sound engineer they can actually mix it to the room instead of being like here's here's our audio track yeah Yeah. not nearly as rigid so it's like half organic half programmed Mm -hmm. yeah i used to have a lot we had a live drummer for a good bit and then I went through four live drummers, and then I said, fuck it. <laughs> uh, nothing against any of those drummers. They're all yeah. awesome people. Uh, the first one sure. was actually Joey, who still plays in Greywalker. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it was just sort of a thing where we ended up like getting a crazy like light projection show. So now like the spot where the drummer would be, we have a bunch of other shit anyways. We don't even have space for a drummer. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck y'all. Yeah. <laughs> fuck us. It we're was actually, an easy decision. Yeah. That, that's interesting yeah. you say that because we're this album that we're working on right now is very similar where we're like kind of figuring everything out pre-production wise. Like we're coming in with a, this is the first time we've ever like haven't recorded songs that we've rehearsed a million times in the rehearsal space. This time it's like kind of bare bones of songs that we're trying to work with our producers on, which is like very, very different for us. So our next album is gonna sound like really different and we're really excited about it. But like that, it's really cool to talk to people who, who are doing that already because that's something that we have never done. We've been a band for 10 years and it's always been the three of us drinking beer and then like writing these like quick three minute punk songs yeah. in, the, in the basement. And the the song we're working on today is just like we're arranging the whole thing in the studio, which is something we've never done before. I like it because you get to spend a little bit more time on the nerdy stuff, like really you do. Yeah. getting to like focus on like tones and textures. And if you're able, like, like, oh, like what would this part sound like if it was doubled? You don't got to like sit there and play it over and over yeah. again. You could just copy paste it and you get a better idea. You can actually like tune into like structuring the best song with like a clear mind versus like mm-hmm. being in the practice space. And like you get a better idea too of actually what everybody else is playing. I mean, you're only a three piece, but you may come across this sometimes where like say you're you actually you've been playing a song forever in the space and then you get yeah. to the studio and you're like, what the fuck? You've been a half step off the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. really? Dude, and you're like, right. With Grey Walker, it's crazy because that stuff happens all the time. So we got two two guitar players plus a bass. So it's like but those little things get off. So if you're just doing pre-production immediately, like you you get a yes. real good idea of like knowing what everybody's actually playing. Yeah. I yeah. agree. And it's I think also to your point, when you're playing songs in the space for a long time, you've kind of you're going into the studio with your mind made up about what the song should sound like because you've you've played it a hundred times mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, that's how the song sounds. And if you have a bare bones idea and you bring it in, especially with like producers that you feel have like a great creative ear who are like totally kind of in the best way possible or like really kind of shape shifting the songs to like be way better than they already existed as demos. It's really exciting. So this is something that I've said a lot about um, independent music in general right now. So we're living in this era where we have all this access to technology and anybody can record music. I mean, you can record an album, take your band promos, put it, online all through your fucking phone yeah if you wanted to you know like you can completely do whatever you want and that's awesome everybody should have that ability but it really kind of makes things a little bit dense in terms of the land of music that exists on the internet and i think one thing that really seems that another thing that seems to be missing from rock music is people's unwillingness to actually take the time to work with producers so you think like back in the day, nobody was recording music on their phones. Like mm-hmm. you pretty much had to work with a producer yeah. Yeah. and get that outside influence. It would help people shape these really great songs. And now you get a lot of bands that are just 100% DIY and that's super cool. But no matter what, on, on a, most circumstances, you can usually tell the difference between a record that was 
you know, engineered and worked with a producer in something that was 100% DIY. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. There's definitely bands that are self-produced that are fucking phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. But if we were going to, you know, put it on a, a pie chart or something, I would guarantee you a large chunk. Like, it'd be, it'd be a, it's a small sliver. It's a very small sliver. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I, most of the time, those albums by, that have albums by bands that are self-produced, the person that produced that album's like somebody that's like a super producer and already records like 2,000 <laughs> other fucking bands. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a, a practice. Totally. Like a Kurt Ballou from Converge. He records yeah. so much fucking stuff. It's his like, stuff is amazing. His yeah. fucking albums are going to sound good because he records exactly. every fucking band in the genre that wants to sound <laughs> like his band. He's He's... I will give Kurt sure. a little bit of credit because he's. I feel like he's starting to do. Uh, uh, he some, does a lot of stuff he's, outside he's, of it. He's for starting sure. to do stuff outside of metal, which is awesome now. But yeah, to your point, he's also a fucking amazing producer. His records always sound uh, amazing. Or like, uh, like who? Uh, Gar- Butch Vig. Yeah, back in the day, did like the garbage, garbage stuff. Like he did yeah. so much fucking stuff for a thousand bands. Of course, his album's gonna sound good. Yeah. Yeah. Which criminally underrated band? That band was so tight. I guess they're still Love. a band, kinda. I don't they, fucking know. I mean, they're probably one of those bands that they like do the legacy act thing. I mean, yeah. like you know, they just put out their they put out their records. They have their it's cemented. They don't have to try to alter mm-hmm. it. Go on tour and then just like quick four month four month four yeah. week tour. <laughs> yeah, get your money, honey. Yeah, yeah, and like play some cool shows. Whatever, that's cool. I'm envy those people. That's hell great yeah, when, man. When you can do that. Yeah. Um. To that end, the replacements. Why'd you cancel your Pittsburgh show? <laughs> What the hell? Tommy, if you're watching, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> my, my my boss knows Tommy. I'll try to get an answer for you. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Okay, Tommy. <laughs> JoePraxy at gmail.com. Yeah, I'll up. get that for you. Can we get some spelling on that for the fans? <laughs> <laughs> uh, phonetically, you'll figure it out. Rave on I, me. I, yeah, with three eyes. Just at Rave on me on Instagram. <laughs> You're, yeah, yeah. Hit, hit, you, hit the DM. Yeah, after you're done posting an awkward photo <laughs> of your hairline in the crowd or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the next show we the next show we wind though. The <laughs> next show we played Howlers to 15 people will be Joe's hairline with with like our great show. Yeah, Howlers Coyote Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey man, I mean, I was just there last night and I did see a great show. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. Howlers is tight. Howlers yeah. is super tight. So yeah, I mean. I think we're good. We good. We oh, did it. Thanks, Brian. This thank has been you. So fun. Before we wrap this up, yes. Let the people know where they can find Rave on Me on the internet. Shout, shout it out. All right. Uh, 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're on Spotify as our band name, Rave on Me. Uh, which we spell that? H O N E Y. There we go. Take that. <laughs> rewind it back. Add it to Instagram with three eyes. And uh, what else? Facebook? Yeah, we're all over it. The normal, the normal channels, right? Yeah. The channels. Yeah, yeah. Rave Me. It's it's uh, consistent across all the platforms. Uh-huh. Three eyes. R A V E A M I I I. My phone number is four one two two six zero four five five one. If you ever want. There you go, this. Tommy. Yeah. Catch him at Eaton Park. <laughs> Catch him. <laughs> <laughs> is that a clip of Paul Westerberg in the studio? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they got the masters back from or the Warner's opinion about uh Dead Man's Pop. <laughs> Don't tell a soul. <laughs> <laughs> it's pre-production on Grey Walker vocals. <laughs> nice. Is that your warm-up? Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. Uh shit. You guys are on Spotify and all that stuff too, right? Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the general spot and yeah. uh Napster. You got Spartify, 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 and uh, <laughs> could have been, could have been, should have been, <laughs> and um, blah blah blah. You're working on yeah. some new material now. There's obviously that's some sometimes a ways, but you got stuff that's already existing on yeah. the internet. There so will, check it out. There will be a new song in January. I can't say that. New song in January. Hell Sweet. yeah! And if you like how we look on your <laughs> computers right now, or phones, or wherever you're streaming this podcast from, we do have a music video on YouTube too. So and watch it for more than 30 seconds so we can get that view. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's only two and a half minutes long, so you can do it, right? All right. Well, just do it while you go to the bathroom. So I can watch all my music videos. Yeah. 
night uh, morning. I'm learning after. a lot about you on this podcast, man. <laughs> I'm learning like a lot about myself too. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning a lot about myself because I'm saying things and looking at your faces after I say them. I'm like, like wow, the- man, I am. That's me, huh? I'm weird. It's all good. Life is weird. <laughs> And that is all, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Pat, Joe, yeah. Evan, rave on me. Thanks again for coming out. Let's do some uh, fist bumps Let's and do whatnot. It. Sorry that we uh, run out, ran out of beer. But hey, whatever. It's okay. Shit happens. I'll be back again in a few days with another episode. Same time, same place, same channel. You know the drill. My name is Sykes. Start the beat. 2019. Woo! Woo! Thanks for listening. Woo! And let's uh, get that slow fade. Oh. And we are done. The laptop's still working, so hopefully. Oh yeah. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just have sticky keys. Yeah. You don't have to hit shift five times in a row.